Hello, this is the Torg Eternity Delphi Council debriefings where the storm has a name. Today will be another brief debriefing with myself as your sole host, Lehman Craft and line developer of Torg Eternity. Um, in our normally scheduled recording that day, I was extremely busy, so it was my fault uh, that we didn't get things uh, done that day. So today I'm doing a brief debriefing. I will go over an email as well as talk about some reality stuff with Torg Eternity 1.5. Some things that you could easily slip into your current Torg Eternity uh, game. So kind of like a pre-preview, if you would. Just to let you know that these are things actually happening. Um, so uh, before I get into the reality stuff, let's get into this email and as a reminder you can email us at torgdcd at gmail.com we will read your email and if you have questions we will answer your questions um, if it's something like this that I can simply answer or try to answer or comment on then I will if it's something that I think that it would be better for having multiple opinions then I'll wait for when we actually have other uh, hosts so having said this this email is from sitting duck it is about Malagua which two episodes I talked about uh, another email a fan had asked about tips on fleshing out Malagua, which is found in uh, Operation Soft Cell. So let's get on with this email. In a prior episode, a listener had asked about fleshing out Malagua from Operation Soft Cell. A resource GMs may find useful to that purpose is the Savage World setting 50 Fathoms. In fact, I believe it may have been the inspiration for Malagua, not only because of the broad resemblance between the two, but because it was one of the first settings. Torg Eternity big guy Shane Lacey Hensley wrote for Savage Worlds. Uh, AFAIK, as far as I know, it's no longer in print. However, it's readily available on Drive Through RPG. Uh, Sitting Duck. So thank you, Sitting Duck, for that email. Um, I will say I don't know of the 50 Fathoms world setting. Um, I would say that I am not confident that it was an inspiration for Malagua. Um, by the time we were doing Operation Soft Cell and the Pan Pacifica wave, uh, Shane Lacey Hensley didn't have much at all, if anything, uh, to do. I looked at the Pan Pacifica uh, books and he's not in any of the writing. I know he wasn't in any of the, uh, the meetings, the group meetings that we had. He, he wasn't in our uh, meeting when we were discussing Operation Soft Cell. Uh, I was one of the authors. John Watson is the one that introduced us to Malagua. Uh, us being Brian we Reeves and myself, who were the other authors of that. Um, I'm not sure if he got it from 50 Fathoms. Um, but I do, I do know that while uh, Shane Hensley has done some things with Tor Eternity after it came out. It has not been a very uh, big part of it. He has his own company uh, to run. I do know that he and Marcus, who is is the uh, head head honcho, the big guy on Ulysses Spila, and and Shane are good friends and communicate often. Um, but I don't know how far that goes down um, previously. I know I don't get anything from Shane myself at all as Torg Eternity, so I don't know how that was with either Greg or Daryl before um, him. So I would just say that there's lots of different movies and tropes. Pirates of the Caribbean seems to be what I took away from Malagua and, and inspirations like the swashbuckling uh pirate movies uh, from, say, the 60s and 70s type things. So that's kind of where I got, um, but I'm not, I can't be 100% sure um, unless I ask John Watson. Um, he's the one that came up with the idea for Malagua. So uh, having said that, I do thank you for the email. If you uh, want to look on Drive-Thru RPG for 50, 50 Fathoms, 
um, and read up on that or read some reviews and see if that might help you with your Malagua fleshing out, then by all means uh, do that. So now let's talk about reality. Um, reality and the reality skill, that is what makes your player character Storm Knights. That's why you play Storm Knights instead of ordinary people. Or what, in my opinion, makes Tor kind of unique and makes it fun is you are playing ordinary people who at some point had to make a difficult choice and the choice led them into becoming a Storm Knight and being able to manipulate reality and keep your reality if you go into a different reality. And you can look at past episodes that we've talked about reality, but here I want to talk specifically about the reality skill and some tweaks that we're doing with it that would hope, hopefully the goal is to uh, get players involved a little bit more in the game as well as take out frustrations that players may have that are legitimate frustrations. There's sometimes in a game I get mad because I rolled bad. Um, that's a legitimate emotional response maybe depending on how loud or disruptive I am. Maybe it's not. Um, again, there's a a line of <laughs> when you cross it and that's up to you and your table but there are some actual mechanics that can be frustrating and those are legitimate things when I see the frustration in myself when I play or in a player when I am a game mastering a table and we wish to alleviate uh, some of that and make it not as fr make the mechanics not as frustrating situations can be uh, frustration if they progress in a game reason then those frustrations can be fun if it's mechanical or something else then possibly not hopefully that's understandable so first let's talk about reality and reality is that as i said that core of what makes a storm knight a storm knight and there are various things in torg eternity that you can do with reality if you get disconnected by the ever law of one then you can use reality to reconnect in Torg Eternity, not Classic Torg, um, reality is used to soak damage. So if you're taking damage and you want to reach out into a parallel uh, Cosmverse and try to choose something where you didn't take that damage or where you took less damage, then you spend a possibility you are uh, make a reality test and then depending on your success or failure, you could reduce the damage that you just took uh, by seeing what that other outcome was and mimicking that other outcome or mimicking as close as that other outcome outcome is um, then there is the um, the so the, the reconnection and the the soaking are kind of the main things in Torg eternity so let's go back to classic Torg. classic Torg uh, was a little bit different you could spend possibilities when you were disconnected in Classic Torg, but you couldn't gain possibilities. And possibilities were both used as possibilities like in Torg Eternity as well as being experienced. So there was a balance that people had to do between advancing a character and having enough possibilities to succeed and do cool things in the game sessions. Uh, Torg Eternity split that up which I know some people don't like, some people love. I started doing that in my original Tor game, maybe six months before Tor Eternity came out. So uh, that was kind of interesting. Um, when I found that out, I was like, hey, I actually made that decision. So I was happy uh, to see that. But let's move forward. Um, in Torg Eternity, you cannot spend possibilities when you're disconnected. And this has a few things that lead into some, what I think is a bit of harshness. And soaking is one of them. So if you are disconnected, you can't use your reality skill, or sorry, you can't spend possibilities. Therefore, you can't spend that possibility you need to soak. And that is very damaging. Um, it just really hurts if you're disconnected and you take damage that is the most common scenario where I see uh, Storm Knights die where I see player characters die and while I'm not of the philosophy that all heroes and Storm Knights should survive every single adventure every single time otherwise I don't see a point of rolling dice other than to tell a, a story um, but I think I 
feel that there should be some consequences and there should be some fear of losing your character. Um, I also play in a group that likes using the martyr car- card a lot because they like switching characters. So character deaths aren't that normally aren't that big of an impact. Again, your table may have variation on your thoughts and attitude. But I do understand there's certain things that are a little frustrating for players. So let's talk about some possible, uh, very likely, I would say, Torg Eternity 1.5 changes that you could easily slip into your current Torg Eternity game. Um, so let's talk about uh, the the soaking aspect let's go back to original classic torg so in classic torg there was no reality roll to soak you just spent a possibility and you were able to remove some damage um you would get what we call packets and you would get three packets packets that you could spend when you spend a possibility so thank you spend one possibility and it breaks up into three three mini possibilities three packets of what may happen and the what may happens were the first one was you could use it to heal one wound the second one and i might be off on this because i haven't i didn't read it before i started recording but i think it was three shocks so you could uh ignore three shock that you're about to take and the third one is that you could remove a a k or an o or a ko condition because there were three types of damage in classic torque so in torque eternity there's wounds and there's shock and if you take wound if you take enough wounds to get to your wound limit and then you take one more you are ko'd and the same thing with shock if you get up to your shock limit and you take one more then you're shocked out and both of those are called ko'd um they were also called KO'd in Classic Torg with the Shock, but there was also a K condition and an O condition. So when you're looking at the charts on how much damage do I take, it would say something like X many wounds, a K, or maybe it said an O, or maybe it said KO, and then it would give you a number of Shock as well. So it would tell you the three different types of damage that you might take. So you could remove that if you got a K, and then you got a no, you got KO'd. If you didn't have a K and got a no, then you were it was ignored. And I believe if you had a K and you got another K, then it was converted to shock. But this is about Torg Eternity, not um, classic Torg. So I'll just say it's a little more complicated. It was very, uh, I would say it was at least moderately difficult for new players to learn. But once they kind of got it down or wrote it down, then they were able to figure out what to do. And it wasn't too difficult. But if you had possibilities, you were always able to shock. And if you took a lot of damage, you were at least able to heal or not take three of those wounds. And there were cases where I saw like eight wounds and somebody still died even though they had a possibility. So in Tori Eternity, you only have two types of damage, wounds and shock. So I could see, and, and again, as I mentioned in the email, I was not there during the uh, designing of Torg Eternity. But I can completely understand that there was some thought about how do we do this soaking thing differently because we only have two. If we give three packets, that seems like a lot because there's no KO conditions to have to mitigate. But two, we have kind of the same wound number. One, two, three, dead. So having only two seems a little harsh you really can't do two and a half so i could see where they're like hey let's tie it into reality and if you reality and you succeed then you heal a wound and a couple of shock or all your shock sorry if you roll a good you heal two and if you roll an outstanding then you heal it all so in that aspect it's better it wasn't limited to three there was a chance if you rolled high enough if you rolled that 20 that you would be able to get a uh not take any damage so that's kind of cool the irksomeness is when you are a player and i've had this happen to myself is you have to spend a possibility to soak which you did in classic tour but then you make a roll and you fail the roll 
So then you're able to boost action because you can only boost action once, but spending that initial uh, possibility to soak, that is spending it to soak, not spending it to boost the action of soaking. So it's you can spend two possibilities to soak. It's just the first one is I get to soak, and the second one is I'm boosting my action to soak, my action die. Um, so then you roll. And I have seen it where then somebody rolled really bad, and even with that, um, like, with the, the one, it's counting as a minimum of a 10, and they still can't get where they need to get. Um, and it's kind of a, ugh, this, this really sucks. I could end up mishapping, or even, on your first roll. Um, and then I can't spend another one. And certain things like that can happen. So one of the things that we're doing is on a failure, as long as it's not a one. A one is still bad, but any other failure, you're at least going to heal shock. So spending that possibility actually will do something for you, unless you're all a one. But it's, it's something better than nothing. It's like a consolation prize. It's kind of that, sorry, but here's something. And I think that at least makes it so that you don't look at it going, I'm not going to get anything from spending this possibility, and that really sucks. Um, so that's one of those aspects. Um, the other thing that was a change between Classic, uh, Torg, and Torg Eternity was spending possibilities when you're disconnected. And Classic Torg, you could. It's just you could not receive those possibilities when you were uh, disconnected. So at the end of an act, at the end of an adventure, when the Game Master is giving out possibilities, which were also experience points, you didn't get them. And that sucked. Um, if you ended up being disconnected at the end of a adventure or act. But you got to spend them. And not being able to spend them with disconnection, that's where I've seen most of the non-martyred character deaths or the deaths that happen in game where it's either not a character uh, got a martyr card and decided to use it because they either thought it would be a cool scene or they actually wanted to play another character and try a different concept out so hey martyr card fun um, I have one group that really likes using them they will pass them around somebody will use them and then they'll get another one and somebody else is like hey I'd like to martyr myself because <laughs> they like playing different characters um, the times that a character has died otherwise usually are the and and the ones that, or I should say the ones that show players getting frustrated are the ones where they can't soak. They don't even have an attempt to soak because they've been disconnected and then they take damage and they just take the damage. There's no chance of mitigating that damage. Um, that's where a little frustration uh, comes into. So. One of the things that we are thinking about is allowing uh, while disconnected to be able to use possibilities on the reality skill only. So you still couldn't use possibilities for your fire, uh, com your fire combat or your melee weapons or your dodge or... Any, anything like that, your alteration, you couldn't use it on that, but you could use it on reality. So you could still attempt to soak, and then it can be frustrating when you've been disconnected and you can't spend possibilities, and every round you're trying to reconnect, and it's no, 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 no. So those two things to kind of alleviate that, we're looking on adding, um, allowing possibilities to be used on the reality. Because again, reality is that core being of a Storm Knight. That is what makes them special. Let the Storm Knights do what the Storm Knights can do. Their thing. Let That is their thing. All Storm Knights' thing is reality. Let them do reality. Um, so if you're disconnected, you could at least spend possibilities on your to, to soak. And it's just not a... I'm dead because I couldn't do anything at all. Not be, I'm dead because I rolled bad or other uh, game mechanic come into play. Just a, I could not do anything because I was disconnected. Um, so that's another uh, thing that we would uh, like to add and probably will be in the uh, Torg 1.5. The last thing that is something that I was actually unsure of 
Um, I understood it could be frustrating. And then I played another game that had a, a mechanism that I thought, that sounds weird. That is really weird. I'm not sure I like that at all. And then my character in that game got in a position where that mechanic was needed. And then I finally understood it and was like, actually, this isn't that bad. And then I was like, oh, I, that, that specific thing can't work in Torg Eternity, but how could I do something to give that effect? So, here is something that you could use in your current Torg Eternity uh, game. And that is what happens when a character is defeated. So, currently in Torg Eternity, and I'm bringing up the rules so I can read those now is if you get to your wound limit and then you take another wound your character has to immediately test for defeat and what they do is they take their lowest of strength or their lowest of spirit spirit strength whichever one's lower unless they have a perk that says otherwise they make a test and then if they fail the character dies and it does say they immediately get one final dramatic action before expiring. He may ignore his wound penalties for this last heroic effort. So they get one last action immediately. No matter when they... If that's a villain's turn, they get that action. Um, but they die. Then if it's a standard, they get knocked out and suffer a permanent injury, which we've talked about previously, so you can check out those episodes... And then if they get a good, they're knocked out and they get an injury that lasts until all their wounds are healed. And then if they're outstanding, the hero is knocked out. But what all of these do is they knock out the character. And what that means is the player is no longer playing. And while the character, or the player, sorry, while the player could start making a new character on the failure, on the standard good and outstanding, they're just out of the game. And that kind of sucks for the player. When they're waiting to be healed or they're waiting to become conscious or whatever, it kind of sucks. Um, so, here is what I would like to do. Is the defeat is they're knocked out of the fight. So they're not knocked out unconscious laying there and not being able to do anything. And let's go back to the core concept of the Storm Knight is reality. Reality and the reality skill is what allows the Storm Knight to do something. So if the character is defeated and they're going to be knocked out of the fight, then they... Every round when it's the hero's turn, they still get to make a reality roll. So it's they get a KO action, is what um, I'm going to call it. So the player can make a reality test. They're using that last bit of whether it's by exhaustion, because both mental, physical, trauma, all different types of stuff lead to wounds and lead to shock it's not just getting beat to a pulp until you're unconscious or dead there's other factors so whatever those factors were to knock your character out of the fight where they cannot continue the fight they are still fighting with reality trying to find that somewhat close other version other cosmverse out there that they can try to mimic so they get a KO action. They get to roll reality. And if they get a, a standard, good, or outstanding success, they can help another player. So they would choose another player. And let's just say they get a standard success. If they get a failure, then at least they've done something. Just like the warrior who's swinging his sword and fails he fails so if you fail but at least the player is still involved the player is still doing something their character is able to do something um, so if they get a standard success they if they want they have cards they can give one of their cards to another player might help the the other player not necessarily need a trade just here's a card uh, it's kind of a, a nice thing that they could do 
if they get a good, and, and all of these would allow you to choose one of the previous uh, lower success levels. So a good is they could tell a player, hey, I did reality. Joe, you can draw a card um, from the, the Destiny deck. So then that person gets another card. And then on an outstanding, uh, say, hey, Joe, on your next attack, you get an up. Something like that. Um, so they are actually helping out the others. And you could do this, like I said, as a reality of, hey, this is something that the the person knows that they might die and they're the last effort and you see this in the cinema a lot of times where that person's last effort is trying to do something to save uh, their friends their companions and it's also a lot of times in movies people protagonists can be inspired by their fallen ally their fallen friend and get more into it so it's a combination of those two things that allows this mechanic uh in my opinion to work really well in a torg eternity uh, setting now you'll ask yourself well what happens uh why wouldn't they just roll defeat well the defeat roll will happen at the end so if they're knocked out they do this by shock they get knocked out and then once they heal the shock they're back up but if they got to the defeat test by wounds, they've been knocked out by wounds, knocked out of the fight by wounds, don't make the defeat test immediately. Have that be an unknown. Have that happen at the end of the encounter, the end of the combat. And up until then, the player can do these uh, KO'd actions, these knocked out of the fight actions, and then at the end, that's when they would roll the defeat at the at the end did were they defeated or not did they take the death did they get the permanent injuries the temporary injuries or are they okay now you'll ask what happens if somebody healed them during that have them make the defeat test at the end and if they're healed and then they're no longer they're at a point of wounds or of uh, shock where they can get back up. If it's shock, it's not that bad. Have them allow them to get back into the game. Maybe have them stymied. Um, I would say if, if they were knocked out from shock, you're stymied that first round until the end of your next turn uh, because you're getting up, you're, you're doing stuff. If it was because of wounds, I would have them very stymied because, again, you're getting up and you were you're going to be rolling a defeat test at the end of the combat have them still then get into the the fight have them allow them to get into it and then at the end of the combat and the player should know you are still going to make a defeat test how does that make sense it's cinematic sense there are many types of books and movies that i have seen and read where the person gets knocked out of a fight and they come back and they help their friends, but then they succumb to their wounds. And that is what this uh, mechanics would portray. And remember, in the original rules, the player still got to do something if they died. If they died, they still got an immediate action with no wound penalties. We're just changing that. We're just allowing that they can get back into the fight. They can do their stuff and then just let the, the defeat test happen. And after the fight so that the players the game master the table can get through that encounter without stopping and getting emotional and getting um, ha having the play break to resolve a player character's death a storm knight's death or defeat or permanent injury or something to that effect the combat stops you have to deal with that first and then you get back in the combat um, so in this way, your combat keeps going. If they're defeated, they just start doing KO actions. If they get healed and they pop back up, they get uh, uh, very stymied. They continue, and then at the end of the combat, that's when you take. That's when you combat goes to the side. 
defeat test starts and you can do that and i just think it plays out uh, more cinematically and again there's just a lot of times where i've seen movies tv series and uh, other forms of media comics and stuff where the person falls down they you think they're dead they come back and they you know they they appear everybody's yeah and then sometimes they are still alive at the end and you see them with bandages or whatever and the when the right before the the credits roll and sometimes they die and then the their friends and that mourn them um so that i think is a, a much better cinematic feel and keeps the player involved in the combat while the combat's going and they don't have to stop to make another character or just stop and do nothing pick up a book and start reading a book or get on their phone or whatever because their player character they've already rolled defeat they know that they're just knocked out and they're just waiting to get back into the game so this is a way to keep the players into the game make some cinematic sense um, and I've talked about what uh, reality sense and cinematic sense aren't necessarily the same but it keeps the player involved so um, now I'll just start repeating myself so having said that I do want to thank you for listening and or watching depending on where you get this and um, until next time I hope you have fun in your own Cosmoverse <laughs>